Okay, we are looking here at reactive oxygen species as second messengers. This is very important because numerous cells generate ROS in response to environmental cues. So what's happening is we are blocking the inhibitor. Uh, the big picture here is that the generation of ROS causes the prolonged inactivation of tyrosine phosphatases and so maintains the phosphorylated or the activated state of the receptor which is the positive feedback loop. So what's happening is that you are um, you are inhibiting the inhibitor or what you're doing is you're inactivating the phosphatase and this results in the stimulation of phosphorylation levels so that the um, the level of kinase activity stays high um, when you need it in the cells. So it's important to know that um, this is how the system works and it's not always uh, bad to have um, oxidants um, that because oxidants are also used as sign important signaling molecules so this is the the general overview of um, ROS reactive oxygen species the final curtain my friend I'll say it clear this is stimulation of ROS production So let's think about some examples of when you would like to have the uh, ROS stimulation. When would you, when it be needed? So, for example, insulin, uh, which plays an important role in glucose metabolism, or PDGF growth factors, uh, or the stress response with uh, TGF beta, or uh, interleukin one, the cytokines, or angiotensin, uh, angiotensin, which is affecting blood pressure. Uh, so this, in this case, you would want to prolong phosphorylation of receptor uh, tyrosine kinases, uh, and so this stimulation would amplify the growth of factor, uh, amplify growth factor signaling. So this is an example of where ROS works and why we need it to to work in certain situations.